This is Envision Self Healing Podcast, episode number 26. Hi, I'm Will Fuller. And I'm Richard Miller. And we are the co creators of EnvisionSelfHealing.com and are dedicated in helping you improve your eyesight and quality of life by taking healing into your own hands. This week's topic is using juicing as an eye exercise. And in the second half of the podcast, we're going to be answering a YouTube question, which asks us, can I do the astigmatism exercises with my glasses on? I have very bad astigmatism. So Richard, how's the world of self-healing been treating you this week? Well, I've been, uh, here we go again. I've been working let, on let my Let me ha- guess you've been busy. <laughs> I've been really busy, yeah. <laughs> I think yeah, pretty I much been, every episode I, in, in, the, in the history of Envision Self Healing starts know, with I've really busy. busy. But I've been getting, I've literally been getting up at five, six in the morning. I get up and I like go out and strip paint off of parts. You're going to get up at six a.m. to go strip go in public. Strip out, out of my deck to go stripping. Yes. <laughs> No, I go out and strip Cold paint. I uh, oh my god, I'm moving boxes around. It's it's crazy, and I'm online all the time, ordering lamps and uh, yeah. oh, oh, just crazy. Building a house, building a house, which is, I mean, I am doing it in record time, so yeah, it, it will be over fairly soon here. Um, so as far as me is my life concerned, I did also order a new juicer, which we're going to be talking about juicing this time of it so mm-hmm. it's timely as usual yeah and i'm very excited it comes next thursday yeah i hope you um, check that guy out yeah and it uh yeah i was telling will earlier this is my sports car of juicers i, I i'm <laughs> treating myself i guess i'm past my midlife crisis but it feels a bit <laughs> this is my midlife crisis juicer so the norwalk juicer it's so. a post Post, yeah. post midlife crisis juicer. Yeah. Maybe I just never got over my midlife crisis. Somebody <laughs> could easily argue that looking yeah. at my life. But anyway, okay, back to healing. Maybe you're going <laughs> to detox that midlife crisis right out of your system with that yeah. juicer. Yeah. Okay, so I ordered this juicer and uh, I'm hoping to start using it next Thursday as soon as it arrives. Mm-hmm. But the biggest event this week was going, um, I was actually pinch hitting for a friend of ours who ironically was teaching a vision class at Stanford and she had eye surgery in the middle of it and uh, so I went down to teach at Stanford and she actually recovered enough to go with me and so we did it together yeah it sounded really good it was really good they were, uh, they're really keen down there aren't they Stanford very keen University yeah for... yeah these are employees of Stanford uh, who unfortunately are very uh, intensely using computers uh, in particular, there's a couple people in this class who are researchers at Stanford. Okay. Very accomplished people at a young age. Mm, there's a few MDs, isn't there, in the class? Yeah, well? one of them was an MD, and another person was a, a researcher and more in engineering. Okay. And both of them, it was, of course, it's fascinating to us, not so good for them. Both <laughs> of them were having uh, macula problems mm. uh, at an age they shouldn't. Yeah. Um. And I think it, it comes directly from uh, the intense use of their central vision doing their research. And the doctors, of course, would never... When I talked yeah. to one of them this last time, she said the doctor mentioned nothing about yeah. it coming from lifestyle or, or using their eyes. Just the same as exercise couldn't help uh, diabetes or uh, right. obesity a few years ago. Exactly. So, but once... Uh, by the second level of problem she hit, she's having she had one macular problem in one eye, and now she's having another macular problem, a different macular problem in another eye. Yeah, which uh, I just want to point out here. This is why we always say to people that even if they've damaged one eye and say it is irreversible, and even if right. self healing can't help with that eye, it's still important to rest the vision that you do have and the dominant, to save that yeah. vision. People really don't think about that when they think about right. self-healing. No, because her other her eye that was first affected, she got treatment and it got a little better. She ended up with a blind spot in that eye because mm-hmm. of the treatment. But, um, but then that put much more stress on the other eye and now it's having macular problems as well, different. Yeah. So it's, it was fascinating to me to see how the lifestyle of a researcher of such intense pressure 
to see and grab information with your mm-hmm. eyes, with your central vision, has an impact on people. And it, they're, these are not all people. These are not people who yeah. have spent a life doing this. It's funny you say that as well, because this week I got a phone call from a lady who was experiencing issues with her central vision. And again, I, I'm, I bet it's exactly the same thing. Exactly. To me, it sounds like edema. The doctors won't diagnose it or they can't diagnose it. They don't know what it is. Um, and she's a book. Keeper. A bookkeeper, right. So, you know, it's, it's becoming an epidemic, I guess. Yeah, I think with the world, with computers, and I do think the stress of our lives, you know, and it, I can't exactly, it's, this is uh, me talking about but people under stress. stress. <laughs> at least your stress is peripheral stress. <laughs> there you go, peripheral stress. And I'm looking at color and, uh, yeah. although I am on the computer a lot, but yeah. yeah. But it is interesting to see... Well, and I can sympathize because their lives are very pressure filled and, you mm-hmm. know, they've accomplished so much. They have ambition and you kind of applaud what they're doing with their lives. Yeah. And yet, you know, the price they're paying for it. Um, so the, the difficulty for everyone yeah. is, is then to find this happy medium that we've, we we mm-hmm. spend so much trying to talk about working, succeeding in life, but being able to make sure you're not overusing and straining your eyes at the same time. Right. And I, I guess in general, we would say it's overuse of the central vision. That seems mm. to be the epidemic that we're all going through. Yeah. So that was fascinating for me to see. But it was also nice that there were, it was a good, there were over 20 people in this class in general yeah. over, over a four week period. Mm-hmm. And they were all very enthusiastic. Yeah. And they could see the logic and the sensibility of what we were saying. It's so. very much common sense. It is. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah. So it's nice, you know, hopefully we might be getting our, our foot in the door at Stanford. Well, and, yeah. Uh, and maybe in a couple of years time, we might actually get some sort of a study or yeah, someone will pay attention at some point when, when everybody at Stanford has lost their central vision. <laughs> <laughs> then maybe they'll start thinking, hmm, I wonder what's going on. But we, we got to save these, these researchers central vision so they continue yeah, to do research yeah, so yeah. they can research us. So. Yeah, we just won't have any researchers left. Yeah. But maybe that would be the research. Maybe that would help them. Yes. And then they can just write it afterwards. Yes. That would be (laughs) ideal. So that was, uh, yeah, other than uh, accomplishing a lot in my house, that was my week this week. And how about you? Uh, Yeah, good. I'm I'm still following on from from last week's, um, I don't even know what to call it anymore. At one point during the week, it was nothing short of a miracle. Right. um, When I was realizing how much my periphery was increasing um, but it's just amazing how over the last few days my brain has pretty much already adjusted to the new periphery it's already uh it's already old news um, oh. <laughs> and, I'm, and i'm trying to figure out the next day it's amazing the brain just you know yeah. a couple of days it was really you know wow look at this yeah extra periphery and everything was new and and then a couple of days in i was like okay so i'm there now what's next you know, how do I, and then, and then a couple more days later, it was, well, I'm sure I've always had this vision. <laughs> <laughs> now I, I could always see that light in this, you know, oh, it's oh, amazing. I could always, and it just it adapts so quickly. Yeah. And I have to, I go back and, and look at the notes uh, that I make because I always keep a vision journal and I'm like, no, you didn't see that no. previously. This, this is, this is new stuff that you're seeing all the time. So it's just amazing to see how the brain just adapts to it and that that eagerness to continue to improve is always, always more, always want more. Well, it also proves that we are under the weight of sort of society saying this, this can't happen. You know, there's a bit of a barrier, sort of almost a glass ceiling for your eyes Mm. that the culture at large sort of enforces this, you know, it can't be happening. You can't, you just hear so much sort of naysaying about mm. what we're doing that maybe even us, you know, we're, we're susceptible to like, well, maybe that really didn't happen, you know? Yeah. And I, I think you also, you always compare your vision to someone else's vision. So True. I'm like, I'm like, wow. Cause I, I was by myself, you know, I was living by myself for a while. Right. Whilst my fiance was in Canada and I'm like, I can see this and I can do this in my periphery. And it was just this amazing thing. And she comes back with her 20 Hawkeye, you know, <laughs> right. 2010 <laughs> vision and, you know, we were sort of walking down the road and I sort of, you know, maybe not stumble or I have yeah. to look to check something, even though now um, I've really, I've been able to decipher each different uh, colors and patterns in the tiling on the ground in front of me, which is amazing. 
Mm-hmm. Um, but in comparison to her vision or to other people's vision, my right. periphery is still poor. So even though I'm going th- through this amazing and still, it's still improving every day. Even only yesterday did I, I started seeing my hands as I walk, like continuously see wow. the hands move wow. as I walk. Um, and some of the, you know, the other stuff that I've been working uh, with that, that I've been able to see that before I just couldn't see whatsoever. Hmm. Um, I even started to see some slight detail in my upper periphery, hmm. which is something I've never wow. seen before. By detail, I mean better color, better contrast. I could make out that it was actually my hand and the, the skin tone of my hand instead of being an object. Um, but certainly it was interesting how I, I just sort of, even though I hit that achievement point and, you know, it really was a massive achievement there, there was no bells and whistles. There was no yeah. congratulations. I They wouldn't give me the Nobel Prize for it. I did ask. No. Um, and, you know, and it sort of just leaves you with that, okay, what's next? Which in some ways is great because it means I'm going to keep pushing myself. And I really have this week been spent in a large majority of my time trying to maintain and utilize i'm almost afraid it's going to go away so i'm yeah. i'm you know really trying to work it because before it was sort of i would notice something in my periphery and i'm sure if we went back and listened to these podcasts actually uh, you'll probably notice uh, for example our a couple of episodes ago i talked about when i went to a, a supermarket or a, or a vegetable shop and i noticed the um ceiling above me and not ceiling was it you call it an awning that comes out you know yeah it's an awning yeah and um, I noticed a bit of it before and I stuck a picture up on our Facebook fan page Mm -hmm. Um, so but I walked past there yesterday or the day before to get a big box of oranges which nearly killed me on the way home (laughs) (laughs) I need to get a car um, or a taxi yeah and um, the difference is this time is I could see and follow the whole awning from the very top all the way down like it, it wasn't a mm. oh there it is oh but it's you know it now it is continuous so there's there's clearly been a there's a connection that's been made there and what i'm trying to focus on now is keeping that and not falling into my old pattern of central vision it, for me it really feels like a, a habit right my central vision is a habit and i notice myself slipping into it every now and then and um you know, it's before I talked about how I need to consciously be in my periphery. Mm-hmm. And over the last few days, it's becoming uh, mechanical. It's becoming more habitual being in that peripheral state, mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. to speak. Yeah. So, and I can actually feel it. I can feel the outsides of my eyes really working um, when I'm in that state. And one of my main eye exercises this week has actually been going for walks. Because what I've been doing is as I as I go for a walk, um, I've just been paying attention to that extreme outer periphery and just noticing all the, the differences and even trying to hold it as one image instead of individual objects. Wow. Because before I talked about, I feel one of the things that got me here was in the periphery I identify individual objects and it builds a larger picture Mm -hmm. now i'm trying to hold it all at the same time wow instead of consciously picking single objects i'm telling myself here's the world see it Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um so as i'm walking of course everything's moving i also found that walking down uh, on lincoln drive which is a main road in here in san francisco so i've got the cars going down one side right i've got the buildings on the other side I've got big, uh, tall buildings above me. One thing I've also been doing is going for walks through Golden Gate Park. Mm-hmm. And I will put a picture up uh, on the Facebook fan page of of why that's been so beneficial to me. And you'll, you'll see in this picture the big, tall trees. Right. And uh, behind that is the sky. So the sky is white or blue, and then oh. the trees are sort of dark. Yeah, contrast, yeah. So And also the light's coming in through the side. So I've got all this stimulates it's the easy contrast for my periphery to pick up well and it's at various distances that the, the branch some branches are closer some yeah. are farther yeah it gives exactly. you a lot of variety yeah so it's like it's just it's a perfect place to walk mm-hmm. through those those big trees stimulate the periphery as i'm walking mm-hmm. and doing it at a, a conscious time and trying to integrate it switch off my central vision incorporate my periphery right 
So anyway, <laughs> so it's been uh, it's been a busy week. Yeah. Um, but uh, obviously, you know, extremely successful. Mm-hmm. One thing I found really interesting is I did start getting eye strain Ooh. during the week. Um, and, you know, after a couple of days, I was, you know, really excited, really working the periphery. And then I did notice a bit of strain from obviously I'm using these cells and, and bits of my vision that that's interesting that because used before we don't think of straining your eyes by using your periphery at all because it's so no. opposite to what we're all doing. Except what you could say is that I'm overworking what's what's been weak all this time. Sure, yeah. So it'd be the same as if somebody's injured their leg. And, I mean, we teach it all the time. Yeah. Whether I'm going to do it or not is completely <laughs> right. You know, if, so, if someone's got an injured leg, you wouldn't tell them just to start walking straight away. Yeah, but they yeah. always want to, of course. Exactly. Yeah. Right. And that's the thing. And I, and I found myself very eager and keen. I was trying to tell myself to slow down. What I really needed to do was palm several several yeah. hours every evening, really sort of integrate it in. But it's so difficult when you when you get these these moments of improvement and it's so exciting and you want to... You know, how far can I go and, and what exercises can make this periphery come back more and all the rest mm-hmm. of it. So, uh, yeah, so it was important for me at that point to sort of, it's uh, ironically, anyway, I only lasted a couple of days. Um, I got a couple of really good nights sleep mm-hmm. and, um, and I did where I was do my peripheral vision exercises. I was putting maybe about 75% of it towards palming uh, okay. and I cut down on the periphery stuff. Sure. Um, so I did uh, cut back a little bit. So uh, just, I don't know, it's funny, we see it all the time with our clients. They start, it's almost like no, having a clear no. flash, right? No. There's somebody trying to get rid of their glasses. They've got myopia. They get a flash of clear vision and they want to get that, get that flash back. They want to yeah. keep working, keep working. Yeah, and unfortunately, that's not necessarily uh, yeah how it works. But for me, I guess I took a real brain approach. Mm-hmm. I wanted to make sure that my brain could strengthen the connection with the periphery that I feel I've lost over the See, years. See, this is where we need those Stanford researchers to, <laughs> to put you in an MRI, yeah, and see the blood flow in, uh, in that part of your brain. Be, I just think it would be so easy to monitor. It would the, actually the act, just the activity, the fact that you. I, I firmly believe that you would honestly see more activity now in the occipital lobe, the, the back of the brain, and in particular where it's the, the vision is responsible for peripheral vision. Right. Um, because I'm, I'm every day actively, you know, seeing more and, and continuously in my periphery. So yeah, um, maybe. No. Maybe if everyone sends us a dollar each, we might be able to afford. <laughs> oh, it. sure. How about a billion people sending us a dollar? We might be able to afford a study of our own. We could build a building at Stanford with a with a billion dollars. We could build a building at Stanford. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was thinking more just doing a study here. All right. Well, okay. Yeah. Maybe we don't need a billion then. Well, maybe for a billion, we can just uh, persuade them, Stanford, to do a study anyway with that amount of money. Well, I just remember they just built a billion dollar building oh, for really? uh, stem cell research. Oh. Yeah, I've walked by it. Let's stick yeah. this one next door. Yeah. The two can compete. <laughs> we can go and sabotage at lunchtime. Well, we, okay, we've got the billion dollar stem cell building. We'll, put, we'll pitch up a TP. That is the eye exercise TV. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> It'll yeah. cost us, yeah. you know, $150. The hippie so tent. The hippie tent, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just teach eye exercises next to the stem cell research, the billion dollar stem cell. <laughs> yeah. yeah, not to stereotype. No, 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 no. So anyway, real, uh, real, real interesting week. And obviously, it's, it's an amazing time for me. The last six years of, yeah. of working on my vision, I really feel like this, I'm sort of at some sort of a pinnacle here or some sort yeah. of a point so I'm, I'm still really excited i'm still trying to get my head around it all what caused it what sort of things you know was was it diet was it working on the neurological exercises was it the eye exercises you know you know trying to figure it all out what you know what really helped and how can i move myself forward mm, sounds good so i think it's about a good time to move on to topic of the week And the topic of the week this week is using juicing as an eye exercise. So those of you that listened uh, a couple of days ago, I talked about how uh, one of the motivations for us focusing on nutrition is I was trying to work juicing into my diet. I was going to do a juice fast, but I sort of felt like it it wasn't the right time. Yeah. 
you know, there's so much crazy stuff going on and I really needed my energy. Right. Um, and it is true. If you and doing a juice fast, at least the beginning parts can be pretty, you can be pretty tired. Yeah. And it's, I think it's important when you do something like that is to respect what you're actually doing mm -hmm. to your body. You are fasting. Um, you're still getting the nutrients, but you're not, you know, physically eating. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think it's a good time to take those 10 days out and see it as a retreat. Right. Have lots of nice baths, go spend some money on, you know, pampering yourself, go right, get a right. massage, you know, buy nicer food that, that to juice than you wouldn't normally use. You know, really use it as a time to relax and maybe even, I don't know, spend some more time meditating or working towards your spiritual practice. Right. You know, it's important people want to power through these things. And I say that because I did that the first time I ever did a fast. That's right. I and I, I was exercising three hours a day. <laughs> I, I think did that. I think on my last, on my last fast, uh, the last day of my, my fast, it was uh, what, 10 days I had done. And I wanted to prove it because it was, a, it was liberating, right? I hadn't right. eaten for 10 days. Right. I'd gone my whole life thinking that I had to eat every couple of hours. Otherwise I would just kill over and die. Yeah. And, um, I went for a 10 K run. On yeah, that, on that, that ninth day, that and was, I, I just felt like a million bucks. Right, I felt like I could have just kept going and going again. Anyway, afterwards, I just I noticed that I'd lost quite a bit of weight, mm -hmm. and um, and it was it was just as liberating as it was. I think the better way I feel to approach things like fasting is is certainly relaxing. And mm -hmm. and how did you find when you did your juice fast? Yeah, that was the the pattern I had was it was how many days. It was the first three, maybe three and a half days, I was really tired. Yeah. And then I had some energy burst. That was the Kind onions. of halfway. <laughs> huh? That was the onions. It was the onions, right. <laughs> you, you, you suggested I put onions in. I forgot that, yeah. <laughs> I don't, well, it could have been time. It could have yeah, been just the onions. It could yeah. have been just the onions. Well, they say that the first three days, your body's getting all the, the toxins out. And I also yeah. think that's when you're getting over the fact that you've not eaten. Yeah. So it's sort of a mental thing of, I've not eaten. When was the last time I ate? I'm not yeah. really tired. And then after about three days, you're like, well, actually, I'm fine. Well, any for for whatever, it was the onions or it was the fourth day, I had a huge <laughs> energy burst, kind of like when you ran that 10K. Yeah. I think that lasted a long time. And I stopped sleeping at a certain point. That was kind of, it's like energy burst that I couldn't sleep for a while. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember that. Yeah. So, Too much energy almost. Yes, it was. I, so um, I found a lot of my energy came from not spending time digesting the food i'd have a big meal and then that would be me done for about half an hour an hour and you know i sort of have to relax a little bit until we let the food digest and with the juicing you know you stick some juice yeah and, and you're not necessarily digesting anything and you feel light and yeah. very energetic and you just yeah go on about your day yeah so that was certainly one thing i found with that but so we we must uh we must separate here that so juice fasting we're not necessarily saying juice fasting is the only way to do juicing juice fasting is something that uh, richard and i have been experimenting with um to see how it can help improve our eyes and also with our health and if any of you have seen the documentary fat sick and nearly dead that's certainly a good motivation for lots of people to start juicing and even if you don't have a serious condition um then it is you know, advisable to, to maybe do a 10 day juice fast. What they call it on the documentary, uh, fat, sick and nearly dead, they call it a reboot. So it allows right. the body sort of kickstart itself uh, back into action. And one of the reasons why that is, is because you're feeding the body with just pure micro nutrients. Mm -hmm. um, all these nutrients, if you think of what you get in a day on the average diet, maybe you have a little side salad, you know, with your, your fish at lunch and then in the evening, I don't know, maybe you have a, an, a, an, a lasagna with, you know, a little bit more side salad. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. And my diet's just been greens for the last, for so long now. I don't know what most the, people what don't the average have. People. They don't eat <laughs> two salads in a day. Forget it. <laughs> so maybe you only have, I don't know, half a salad in your day. And then, that's, I mean, if you think how many micronutrients that is. Uh, by micronutrients, you know, we mean things like uh, vitamin A and B and, and mm -hmm. everything that helps uh, get the body regenerating again. Then, you know, compare that to if you were just juicing 
three three main times a day where you're I don't know how many pounds would you say that you juiced in a day? Oof. Yeah, on well, the juice fast it might have been wow, four or five pounds I would think. Yeah. I don't know. I mean I know I was doing sixty ounces three three times a day, so I was I was really getting that juice in there. So the idea is that you're supplying the body with lots of nutrients and uh, you're not eating as well so your body the time it normally spends digesting it can also spend on healing the body and also you're not necessarily getting any of those toxins that you would normally get um from maybe dairy or meat mm-hmm. or you know or chocolate alcohol mm-hmm. you know, all those things are cut out so that you're just allowing the body a chance uh, to repair itself and take a time out yeah. So it's great for things like getting over coffee cravings, um, any sort of drug, nicotine, you know, mm-hmm. it's, it's a good way to give the body a rest, clear out any toxins from the liver and the kidneys and anything there um, to then help your system feel a lot better yeah. afterwards. So juice fasting is one thing that we recommend. Of course, if you are going to do it, then they, you know, you, you should go check with your doctor to make sure that it's okay to do so. But there is more and more research and more TV documentaries and everything showing how getting these, you know, doing things like these juice fasts can really help really any sort of kind of condition. Mm -hmm. And you, but you've been experimenting with a slightly different approach lately. Yeah. So juice fasting is sort of, is one area and we're not saying if you're not going to juice fast, don't do juicy. Right, right. (laughs) Um, that's just, I guess, an extreme. And when you're ready to do it, then it's something to look into. But if you can't do that, or you're, you know, you're not quite ready for that yet, then just putting just one juice a day, even if you just have a juice for breakfast, but it's a freshly made one. Right. Um, there's a lot of people that say maybe a green juice, if you could try and juice up some kale or spinach or just to get the greens in. Yeah, and maybe you start out with fruit juices as sort of a, you know, getting your feet wet yeah a little bit but then we would encourage you to start adding in vegetable juices because um with the fruit you're mainly getting fructose Mm -hmm. with the juice you're getting the vitamins too with that but if you just went with fruit you'd just be sitting hitting yourself with a bunch of fructose yeah i remember when i did my first juice fast and i i was doing a lot of fruits because i you know wanted the calories right and i found that i would be energized Right. For half an hour, an hour, and then I'd crash. Crash, yeah. Um, but when I mainly juiced vegetables, mm-hmm. then I was just, I was just fine mm-hmm. uh, all day long. So you're also, I mean, think before when we talked back in the, the first podcast um, on nutrition, we talked about vitamin A, zeaxanthin, right. and, and lutein. Right. And of course, the best sources of those were uh, for, for the beta carotene and the vitamin A was in the carrots. Right. You know, anything bright and colorful, tomatoes, peppers, that sort of stuff. And then the lutein and the zeaxanthin is going to be in your greens, in the right. spinach, kale, uh, any sort of lettuce. Collard greens, yeah. Yeah, so this way, I mean, it's very difficult. I mean, I couldn't sit and eat a whole bunch of, well, I actually could sit and eat a whole bunch of spinach, but uh, things like, you know, collard greens or kale, I couldn't sit and eat a whole bunch of kale. That would be, yeah. that'd be too difficult. So what you're doing is you're juicing it instead. It's, you know, it's a hit, a hit yeah. of nutrients. And um, even if you can only do that once a day, you're still getting that X amount of extra uh, vitamins and minerals that you wouldn't otherwise be getting. And certainly if you're looking at vision improvement, then that vitamin A and uh, and the lutein and all the rest of it is going to help uh, improve that, that vision improvement process. And I guess um, we would also say that what a you know, how much better that would be to get it fresh from the vegetables as opposed to going and buying even the highest quality supplement. Yeah. Um, it, there's really no substitute for the actual vegetable giving yeah. it to you. And nature. I mean, we're, we're yeah. biological animals and we, we, you know, we respond to cells and such and it mm-hmm. makes sense to get it as natural as possible. They're even saying now with the juice that you buy in, in the supermarket, it's been pasteurized. So they've killed off a lot of the, the good stuff that's, that's good for you. Plus think how many days old that juice is. Right. And they say with juicing that you should really sort of drink it within the four hour mark because of oxidation and you know, the loss yeah. of vitamins and minerals. And as an example, actually, even if you don't have a juicer and maybe you're just thinking about it, Say you know somebody who does, 
take uh, a bottle take a bottle of your the best orange juice you can get in the supermarket mm-hmm. oh yeah then to buy four oranges and yeah. go and juice those yeah. oranges totally different drink the two and there's no there's really no comparison no, there isn't. between the two no so certainly something that i've been experimenting with now is juicing continuously throughout the day and eating my healthy meals three times a day so i'm still eating my meals but i'm juicing at the same time and um yeah i mean i don't know whether it was necessarily the reason why i'm sure there was lots of reasons but this was certainly when i got this boost in peripheral vision right and i mean it just makes sense you're just the body wants to heal itself remember last week we talked about a house being made of you know the house is only right. as good as the materials you make it from and you can imagine that i'm just supplying myself with all these nutrients or you know people at home wanting to help themselves they're supplying the body with all these micronutrients so the body's able to do the job that it wants to do right so one uh, one of the cons that we really feel with uh, juicing, uh, something that they say also, is that you don't get the fiber. Right. So, I mean, for me, my personal argument against this is you're eating anyway, so I don't understand necessarily what they're talking about. And if you just juice, you don't really need the fiber because there's nothing solid there anyway, so... I don't quite understand oh, that's true. the, whole, I see what you're saying. Yeah, <laughs> the yeah. whole fiber thing here. Well, I mean, there is the health of your call. I mean, if you... I don't think anyone could completely live on juice for the rest of their lives. No. But you certainly wouldn't have a healthy colon if you didn't have <laughs> any fiber for the rest of your life. But as you say, maybe you wouldn't need your colon. Yeah. I don't uh, know. I see. Now, I guess the thing is here, I'm thinking about my diet, which is oh, sure. mainly fruits and vegetables. Right. Uh, okay. So where is your someone that has a lot of meat, a lot yes. of carbohydrates? Yes. So if you were just... Eating meats and carbohydrates, well, not vegetable carbohydrates, but, you know, yeah. grains and such like that, uh-huh. and then you supplemented with juice, you would be lacking in fiber. Right. You would never think of living that way, but that, that's what they're imagining you could do. Right. Yeah. So, so that's uh, what they're... So I see now. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah, amazing. Yeah. It's not in your I consciousness. Completely, completely yeah. skipped by me. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, that, so, again, I mean, my answer for that is just eat more fruits and vegetables in your day, which everyone should be eating anyway. Well, and this goes back to maybe the overdose of fructose. One uh, strategy is to juice the vegetables and uh, put the fruits in your blender and make a smoothie out of the fruits, which keeps the fiber with the fruits, and that gives you the fiber that you do need already. And you're probably, as you as well as as well as lifestyle. Uh, professes if you're eating salads and stuff like that you're getting enough fiber that way as well Mm. so so yeah so i guess that that sort of um the only other con i guess i would make out on the juicing is it can take time it does um and you do have to spend more money on vegetables fruits and vegetables but i mean what are we doing here anyway you know yeah we're we're trying to heal ourselves we're trying to improve our health if you're not going to spend a little bit of extra money on fruits and vegetables then you know you're really limiting yourself in what you want to achieve but uh, I certainly know people tend to find it's an effort I know myself I have to get up an extra 40 minutes earlier in the morning because I do the extra juicing and I prepare a juice for later on in the day and and then prepare my big <laughs> breakfast of fruit so um so it can be time consuming which true of course you know we all know that that can be difficult but one way around no, what Richard if you're not getting up at six and stripping out in your yes. backyard <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> then it's a little easier yes and if, if you've only just if you missed the beginning and you're just listening now it's paint stripping Richard, paint stripping Richard is joking because <laughs> um, he would get arrested although we're in San Francisco no it's, it's legal it's legal it's here. totally it's legal, legal. yeah okay so don't worry about it um, so one thing then if you are maybe concerned about the fiber is uh, then you could do the smoothies and I mean smoothies are great, great yeah. tasting. Uh, they fill you up for a big while there. I was a big smoothie guy. I was you know for breakfast right. I was having like four or five bananas with you oh, know, half right. a basket of uh, blueberries and strawberries and I just couldn't think of a better way to start. Everyone's desperate for a smoothie now. I can hear it. Yeah, it's, uh, perfect. Throw in a few ice coals. Have it ice cubes. Have it ice cold. It's perfect. But I would say that I had a trouble with you know, kale, those kinds of things in the smoothie, in my digestion. So okay. you don't have, not everyone's this way, but if you do start the smoothie stuff, if you start making smoothies with kale and collard greens and those kind of things, and you're feeling like, ugh, my intestines don't like this so much, 
that would be an argument for maybe smoothing the fruit and oh, juicing, juicing the kale the, and yeah. collards so you're not dealing with that kind of raw collard thing. Yeah. yeah. And some people that are fine with it, it's, it's just Google green smoothie and you'll yeah. see there's this big... Well, the second green revolution yeah certainly a lot healthier than the first one um is you know trying to fit these super greens into your diet mm-hmm. and i mean really just if, i mean spinach is a little bit milder mm-hmm. that's um, true you know if you could just stick that in in the morning and you'll be surprised how much better you feel and how you're getting that that fix of greens mm-hmm. during the day um and uh, i guess that one of the things that juicing has over smoothies is with the amount of uh, vegetables that you're going to juice, you just you couldn't eat that. You couldn't fit it in right. your stomach. So that's why juicing is so good is because you couldn't necessarily humanly actually eat that amount of food that you would juice. Right. So that's a, that's a pro with juicing, um, but whereas you're not getting the fiber, but whereas the smoothies, you're getting the fiber, you're getting the fruit as a whole, Mm-hmm. Um, but you're also getting that bulk, so it's a little bit more difficult to ingest the right. same amount of nutrients. But I really like that idea of juicing and, and smoothing. smoothing. So I guess if you're somebody that works nine to five, I mean, we need to be realistic here. I guess juicing and smoothing, it, you know, it could be a little oh, bit more difficult. But I, I guess if you, did a, if you did a smoothie for breakfast, yeah, and when you get home from work, the first thing you do is a juice. Right. I mean, you're good. For the yeah, day. You've, yeah. You know, you've you've gotten your nutrients. Um, certainly, one thing I always notice is my skin. My skin always changes when I start huh. juicing and smoothies and getting oh, more wow. nutrients. And even clients have commented on, on your skin. Yeah, on my skin. Yeah. <laughs> wow, skin, yeah. I want and, your clients, <laughs> and, I, and I and I can feel it as well. I, I genuinely can feel that my skin feels wow. uh, better and mm. and all the rest of it. So everyone's spending you know millions of dollars on uh, on uh, cosmetics. Yeah. Just juice is yeah. natural and uh, healthy at the same time. Sounds good. So uh, certainly we could talk about this subject for you know for a lot more, and, and maybe we go into a little bit more detail on different types of juices and right smoothie machine. It really is a whole number world out there. I'm gonna be wanting to talk about my new oh yeah, yeah sports car juicer. So we got to talk <laughs> yeah, some more we'll about, talk this. about that. <laughs> maybe we'll talk about it next next week. week yeah, um, when you get it, I want to try it. I'm pretty excited. Yeah. Um, so, but. Don't be overwhelmed here necessarily. We're trying to just um, juice some information. Oh, um, we're really just trying to, you know, get you to know about this this separate world that's out there of juicing and smoothies. And it's a real shame that it's not recommended to everybody that goes yeah. to the doctor's office because, I mean, it's it's undeniable the benefits of of getting the the nutrients right um so certainly just start looking into it you don't have to go out and buy a juicer now or a smoothie maker now just just start having a look get it ticking over see if it's something that sounds good for you and could maybe benefit you and then maybe start looking into a little bit more information on how you can get going with that yeah sounds good so i think it's about a good time to move on to question of the week And the question of the week this week comes from a YouTube viewer who has astigmatism and asks the question, can I do the astigmatism eye exercises with my glasses on? Um, One particular reason why he was asking this is because he was saying that his astigmatism is relatively bad. Right. Um, Obviously, that's something very difficult for us to gauge. But regardless, what we're trying to achieve here is natural vision improvement. So we want to try and improve our eyesight as much as possible in a natural way. Yeah, and probably what he's hitting, what a lot of people, a lot of our clients hit, is the uh, they're just so used to their glasses that the blur they encounter when they mm. take them off, it's a bit of a psychological barrier you have to get over Yeah. of, I have blur. And they're yeah. just so used to avoiding that blur that that's one of the first things they hit. Yeah, it's almost like a, I don't know, a very negative thing. Yeah. Um, and again, one of the big reasons why I was able to achieve what I achieved with my recent breakthrough was I had all that ah. static and I had to stay with it and I had to go through the static, something that I wanted to avoid completely because right. it's reminding me that I'm going blind. Who wants to see that? 
um, it's the same thing, you know, but spending time there, the brain adapts to it and you, you know, you start. Yeah, well, so, uh, today I was walking along. I normally walk, 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 walk until I'm maybe 10 feet from something mm-hmm. to identify it as the mailbox. Okay. And I'm like looking across a street, you know, across a, another street. Mm-hmm. So I'm maybe a third of a block away. And I have a sense, maybe there's a mailbox on this corner. And I look across and there's, you know, a blob basically. Mm-hmm. In the shape of a mailbox. <laughs> it wasn't a woman. <laughs> it wasn't a heavily overweight woman. No, no it wasn't. For, fortunately not. It was, actually, it was actually a mailbox. <laughs> oh, good. And I noticed, it's like, it just that sh- shift, like you're saying, like, I wouldn't normally stop and look for a mailbox at that distance. Yeah. I would wait until, I would probably just ignore whatever that blob was, walk another 20 feet, then look in that direction. Mm-hmm. And that's the same thing. You're 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 engaging with the blurriness of it all, and instead of ignoring it and trying to only accept what you can see at that, you know, clearly. You could really see it as use it or lose it. So what we're really trying to do here is use what's weak or just use what's natural, and then it starts to strengthen. And then you're able to start using it again and seeing better with it. So by doing the astigmatism or any eye exercise without your glasses. You're retraining the brain to use the eyes naturally and helping that vision improvement improve so much better. But one thing I did say is, well, it also depends on uh, safety. And, you know, we don't know what situation this this person's going through. So you have to really gauge for yourself uh, whether you feel that you need to wear your glasses while doing it. But in general, we certainly recommend that you shouldn't wear your glasses when doing your eye exercises. Right. Consider it sort of good form in doing your exercises, just not wearing your glasses. And less strain as well. Yeah. Um, and it's it's also good to start getting used to the blur, get used to being without your glasses, and you'll notice improvement just from that in itself. So it is an important aspect to get rid of your glasses is to try and use them, use them less and less. When actually, if you did the exercises with your glasses, you wouldn't notice that you were improving, which is part of the exercise point. for a lot of people is you do the exercise. Oh, I see a little clearer now. And if you have your glasses on, you're just going to be rote going through the glass, the exercise. Yeah. And that's not what we want you to do. We want you to appreciate the increase of clarity as well. So. Okay, well, we hope you've enjoyed this week's podcast on Envision Self-Healing. And uh, if you want to find out a little bit more information, you can head over to our website at envisionselfhealing.com. And there's a free ebook there that you can get your hands on that give you some real basic but good information on how vision improvement can start helping you and your eyesight. You will also find some free vision improvement programs over there so you can get started on improving your eyesight as soon as possible. We also talk about all the exercises there and some videos so that you can really get a good grasp on how to do these eye exercises so you can start getting going today. You can also check out our Facebook fan page where we post uh, pictures all the time and post information on how we're getting on with our own eyesight and indeed some people leave us some questions over there and so we start building a little community. I'll put a picture up this week of uh, the Golden Gate Park where I was using that as my eye exercises and you can also check out the uh, other picture I had there of when I went to the vegetable shop and how I've actually noticed an improvement of seeing more of the upper awning of that vegetable shop down there uh, in San Francisco. You can also follow Richard and myself on Twitter where again we regularly do updates and also keep people updated on information on the latest thing that's going on in the world of Envision Self-Healing. And if you're listening to this on iTunes, then you can simply press the subscribe button and you'll be able to get one of these podcasts sent to you automatically every week that we do. And if you're watching this on YouTube, you can also subscribe there. And again, you'll be notified every time we release one of our latest videos. So good luck with your eye exercises this week and happy healing. And have a good week.